I have been very passionate in mathematics very early on, and eager to present the beauty and my love of maths to others. That is why on the screen right now you can see a website that I designed when I was 13. It is definitely not well maintained, and I have lost the files, so I cannot update the site anymore. You are more than welcome to click the link in the description to see my work. I learned about Catalan numbers in a combinatorics course outside school when I was 13, and I didn't think too much of it. However, one year later I came across this kind of square maze where you need to go from the bottom left to the top right. Suddenly, I thought of a question, given a particular size, how many mazes could there be? This is an utterly vague question, because first of all, what does a maze even mean? And what did I mean when I said a given size? So I narrowed down the question into thinking only about the solution path. Then this path lies on a particular grid, and so we can talk about the size of the grid. But of course, there are problems with this simplification which I completely ignored at the time. For one thing, one maze could have different solution paths. And the other point is that different mazes could have the same solution path. But I didn't care as counting solution paths is way less ambitious than counting mazes. I told my math teacher in school about this problem that I had been working on for fun. He told me that I should be looking for something called self-avoiding walks, which are paths on the grids that don't visit any vertex more than once. This is perfect for my project because the solution path should have this exact property. If the so-called solution path has a vertex that is visited twice, we can cancel this portion and obtain a shorter solution path. And in a maze, nobody would say there's a solution path, right? And something like this is totally legitimate, because it is possible that there are walls to block you from going with the shortest route. When I went back home and scrolled down the MathWorld page, I found that there are formulas known only for small grids. And this for some reason excites me. I could have made an original discovery. Of course, I was being arrogant here, because even proper mathematicians couldn't work out those formula. Why should I have any reason to believe so much in myself? To emphasize the difficulty of the problem at stake, think about the number of self-avoiding walks on this simple grid, from the bottom left to the top right. Pause the video and work out the answer. Are you ready? The answer is 12. These 12. You probably got this right. But what if I just increase the side length of the grid by 1? Pause the video again to work out the answer. The answer is 184. That escalated quickly. In fact, there is an OEIS page dedicated to this particular problem, recording the nth number in the sequence as the number of self-avoiding walks in an n times n grid. And here, you can see that the logarithmic plot of the sequence behaves quadratically, so the growth of the sequence is more than exponential. I quickly gave up on the idea of making an original discovery because I drilled on that for too long and I still haven't had a clue how to tackle that problem. Because even for this particular case, I couldn't count properly to give an answer of 184. I turned to something that I knew of, the Catalan numbers. I didn't remember exactly how I drew parallels between the very ambitious problem of the maze and the Catalan numbers, but I think I might have thought of this. The Catalan numbers can also be formulated in a one-dimensional way. Assume a robot is initially on the origin walking along a non-negative number line. It can either walk to the left or to the right, but it cannot cross the zero mark. If after two end steps it goes back to the origin, the number of ways the robot could do this is the Catalan number. This problem has some sort of constraint in the sense that the number of right steps must be at least the number of left steps. In the maze problem, we can also say that the number of right steps must be at least the number of left steps and also the number of up steps must be at least the number of down steps. 
Of course, these are not the only constraints for the self-avoiding walk problem, because these two conditions don't exclude the self-avoiding part of the counting. But that's close enough to make me think that there might be connection between the two problems. The thing is, we can solve the Catalan number problem using a two-dimensional grid, which we have seen before in the video series. So we need to use a four-dimensional grid to solve the self-avoiding walk problem, even if we ignore the self-avoiding constraint. That was definitely out of my element, but I didn't give up yet. What I tried to do was to study the Catalan number problem a little bit further, then try to think of a way to generalize this to this supposedly four-dimensional problem that I am eventually after. So just to be clear about the timeline of the narrative, first of all I thought about the maze problem. How many mazes are there given some size? Then I simplified it to counting the number of solution paths, which happen to be self-avoiding walks, which many mathematicians studied. But then, this is still too ambitious a task, so I went back to studying the Catalan numbers further instead. So I generalized the Catalan numbers like what you saw in the previous video. That generalization part was done when I was 14, these were done all by myself and I felt very proud of it and called it a day. One year later there was something called a mathematical modeling mini thesis competition and my math teacher encouraged me to join. I totally ignored the mathematical modeling bit because I thought I had been thinking about this whole thing for a long time. This was about time I finished it. So I actually did even more generalizations that I have described towards the end of my last video, as well as two more cases. Again, these were all done by myself, but then two unfortunate things happened. Firstly, I suddenly realized the phrase mathematical modeling, and I needed to come up with a real life situation for all of these to fit. That's why I thought of this bank deposit or loan scenario. Now this cannot be called mathematical modeling because nobody in the real world will count how many ways there are to solve a problem. But this is still better than having no quote unquote real life situation in it. The second unfortunate thing is that towards the end of my project, I figured something called Catalan triangles and trapezoids, which were exactly what my generalizations had been about. So I couldn't exactly call those my original discovery, the best that I can say is I discovered them independently. So at the last minute, I decided to just cite those sources about the Catalan triangles and trapezoid. I didn't get a medal or anything because that was not even remotely a modeling problem. I literally just forced a made up scenario into my pure math problem. I got honorable mention in the end though. Naturally, I would really want to see what other contestants of the competition wrote that got the medals. I really just wanted to know how a modeling should have been done because throughout this project, I had not learned anything about mathematical modeling. So I saw the title of the mini thesis that got bronze and it says, The Mystery of Five Pointed Stars. I didn't know what the content of that article was about, but I was pretty sure that it was not more real life than my mini thesis. It did not even hide the fact that they were not doing modeling. Okay, I'm not salty, I'm not salty, I'm not salty. But in any case, this was the first proper project or research that I did, so it really meant something to me even if I didn't get any concrete thing like prizes out of it. I hope that this video gives you a little bit of context behind this video series. I don't know if you guys like these types of not so mathematical videos once in a while because this type of video is fun for me to make, not sure if this is the case for you as well. Tell me in the comments whether you like it or not and I will tune the frequency of these types of videos. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe with notifications on. See you in the next video. Bye!